Chain binders, how do they work? That is the question, and today we're going to find out. All right, now, part of me doesn't want to make this video because there's always a bunch of people that are going to be like, oh, oh, you know, blah, 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 this is obvious. How does anyone not know this? But, you know, the reality is this isn't instinctual God-given knowledge. Uh, you know, everybody has to learn this stuff. I just had to learn it like uh, probably two years or so ago. I, I watched every video I could find on YouTube at the time, and uh, even with that, I learned a lot about some tricks of the trade to using these things, and, uh, and some very generous old-timers showed me some stuff I want to pass on to you guys as well. So... Behold, the ultimate chain binder guide. Now, I gotta add the obligatory disclaimer here, you know, make sure you do this at your own risk, and uh, you know, if you try anything you see in this video and your trailer falls off your truck and kills someone because you're an idiot and you didn't do it right, not my problem. And also make sure you look up wherever it is you live, there's probably some uh, unelected bureaucrat who's come up with a completely random menagerie of traffic and transportation rules and regulations, so that uh, if, the, if the right person sees you, they can wring hundreds of dollars out of you while you're just trying to move your stuff safely from point A to point B. But all that aside, Basically, the way this, that this has been done pretty much since the dawn of things on four wheels is to secure this off of every corner. What we want to do is get the chains at as close to a 45 degree angle as possible. A few disclaimers here. Make sure what you're tying stuff off to is sturdy. I know it sounds obvious, but don't be, you know, running chains through steering linkages or around here so it's going to come down and crush this steering linkage. And, uh, yeah, but, you know, on this particular tractor, I put this nice frame on here so I can have a D-ring on the front of it for pulling stuff or moving the tractor if need be. So I usually just run a chain down around here. Failing that, I would probably go from the axle. And if you go from that side, then it's going to push on that giant cast iron center block that'll take thousands of pounds of force. And I go across here because if I tried to tie it off here, it's going to be hitting the tire, which we also don't want. On the back of the tractor, usually what I like to do is run across this draw bar right here. But really anything sturdy will work. One word of advice I would give is do not tie off to anything that moves. So that would be this three point hitch and obviously this PTO shaft, we don't want to be working off of that either. Hmm. Oh. Now I'm making a point to leave this machine in gear. And uh, if whatever you're hauling has a functional parking brake, it's good to have that as well. Now when it comes to the actual chain binder, the way to start off with this is, so, is with the handle inwards, so that way when we take this amount of slack here, we're pulling on this, so that way when I put the cheater pipe on it, I'm pulling towards me, and right now if this were to slip or something were to let loose, it would be flying away from me just like that. The alternative is how people get themselves injured with these things. And that is to go like this because if I'm doing this and see how my face is approximately or something came if something let loose then this bar is going to smash my jaw or else the cheater pipe will or you know whatever the case so this is coming back at me and this is what we don't want now look guys I'm not a trucker or whatever I'm sure people everybody's going to want to complain and you should do it this way, this way which is fine but you know I've seen so much completely unsecured machinery riding around on trailers where I live and even a lot of really ultra sketchy stuff on large trucks where the people driving them should really know better. Um, you know, whatever, I'm just, I'm just gonna make this video, I don't even care. So, with this, you'll see, even with this cheater bar on here, oh, actually this is the first one, so I could force that if I wanted to. But let's say this is a little too tight, but if I were to take a full link out of the equation like this, see now it's way too loose. I mean, it's doable, that would probably work, but I want it a little tighter than that. So you say, how do you get a halfway point with this? Well, it's really simple. What we do is that. Because when we come around, come on camera, don't be all belligerent with me. Okay. When we come around and we make an adjustment here, this takes a full link out of the equation. When we move this, since this goes around whatever we're working on, it changes us a half a link at a time. That's the most valuable trick that anybody's taught me with these chain binders. And I feel pretty comfortable with that. Now we're going to make sure, when there's no tension on this, that this is kind of rolled, so nothing's going to be in the way of anything else. And then, just like that. Now, one thing that I'll do sometimes is put a little pressure on this, and then kind of knock that over because 
piece is over center, the more secure this is going to be. If this is kind of like, I mean, you'll see the point where it lets loose, which is about there. So, you know, if we only tightened it this far, then all it would take is next to nothing to pop it loose just like that. So I always make it a point to run this all the way down. Just like that. Make sure it doesn't have any further to travel. And take this remaining chain and loop it around the handle. One, so the chain's not flopping all over the place and falling off the side of the trailer. And two, it's kind of like a little fail safe because it's yet another layer of insurance to keep this from uh, popping open. Are they archaic? Yes. But you know what? They get the job done. I've never had a problem with any of mine. And uh, what's well, not to love? Now that I've got this corner done, I'm going to do the opposite side of the tractor. Another thing, and this one's pretty obvious, when I'm working out in the field, when I unload a machine, when I get somewhere, I'll just take the chain and the binder, toss it in the grass next to it. There's not really much point in putting this away, but obviously if you're like in a parking lot or parked on the side of the street or whatever, it's really important you throw that directly underneath the deck so you can still find it, but it doesn't get run over. All right, now this side's gonna be pretty much the same thing. It's really tempting to just like grab this like this, just like you would, you know, a wrench or something, but don't do that because if this launches, it's going to mess your thumb up. So it's really important. It's just like if you're trying to crank start an old car or an old tractor, you don't wrap your thumb around this. You put your thumb back here. So that way, if we were to pull this and it kicks a little bit, it's going against the palm of your hand and maybe it'll knock your hand out of the way or whatever, but at least this way it doesn't take your thumb off. I chose this design over the wrench binders because uh, it's simpler and there's no threads to get gummed up and full of junk. And this style binder has been around since the horse and buggy days. Worked fine then, works fine now if you ask me. So look guys, like I said, I'm not a trucker. I don't really know what I'm doing. Uh, but in my limited experience, once you have two opposite corners tied down, this really isn't going to move anywhere. I'm not saying take it on the road like that. But I'm just saying at this point, I don't think it really matters much if we do this corner or the opposite corner. It also helps if you're over six feet tall so you can grab stuff like that. <laughs> That's the long and short of the way that I strap stuff down when I'm moving equipment. Is it perfect? I don't know, probably not. I'm not a trucker, but I know it works bloody excellent. Nothing ever moves. And I also know it's better secured than, without exaggerating, I would say at least half of the loads I see driving around Texas, including on big rigs and commercial vehicles. You know, my personal favorite things that I see and I get really nervous about, because I have like friends and family and loved ones on these roads as well, is when someone's idea of securing uh, not even usually like a car, usually it's like a 15, 20,000 pound skid steer, is, uh, is a dump trailer. That is it, that is their entire system. They drive it in there, they shut the tailgate, that's it. No chains, no strips, nothing. And they just like roll it across the operator's platform on the tractor. I've seen the damage from that. At least two of the tractors that I bought used have marks all down the transmission from idiots doing that. And uh, you can actually, a lot of people don't realize this, you can literally split the tractor mirrored in this phone there yeah you can literally split the tractor right there because you think oh it's old cast iron it'll be tough yeah it is pretty tough but you know what it's not designed to be loaded in that way so you know it's probably only like a quarter inch to maybe a half inch thick if it's a larger machine so if you take grandpa's Ford 8N or whatever and, uh, and you run chain across and you bind that down really hard you can literally split the entire casing in two by doing that never mind the fact that in no way shape or form is that a suitable way to secure anything if you have to come to a panic stop but i guess that's why people just get the dump trailer because you don't have to worry about it just like slides into the front of it oh my goodness anyway uh if you actually know what you're doing feel free to add some tips and tricks in the comments section below like i said 
more secure than at least half the stuff that rides around in this state. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.